Hello and welcome to Captain Bob. Today I'm here to tell you how to connect a potentiometer to Moby Flight. So now this responds to the input over here. If you want to follow along on this tutorial, all you'll need are these jumper wires, a potentiometer, I'm using a B10K potentiometer, that's a linear potentiometer, and an Arduino that's Moby Flight compatible. You can check the Moby Flight website for what Arduinos are compatible. So first let's learn how a potentiometer works. You might have to use your imagination on this one, I'm, I'm sorry. It's much easier to think of this as a variable resistor instead of a magic poof box of magicness. So the middle pin is the wiper, and it basically divides the resistance into two parts. But you'll also notice when it's here, it's the path from this wiper to this wiper is actually zero, um, and this wiper to this wiper is 10k ohms. All this potentiometer is doing is providing resistance. If we get a random resistor from my bag of random resistors, plug it in to each of these pins, you'll see it gives a resistance of 0.042 ohms. So I think this is a 42 ohm resistor. This resistor right here, this one gives such a high resistance that I actually had to change its setting. It gives like a bunch of ohms. I don't, I don't actually know how to read these. This is 67,000 ohms, I think. This ohmometer or ohm reader or whatever it's called, I'll, I'll display the, the values up here once I figure it out. So this one is 67,000 ohms. You can see how different resistors give you different ohm values. Let's hook this one up. You can see that the resistance, as you turn this wiper, um, as you turn this knob, the wiper changes the resistance from a value of like 0.0k um, ohms all the way up to about 10 ohms. These aren't perfect. They have a certain tolerance they have to be in. These are a little bit cheaper, so you just have to calibrate them. But something cool is that if you unplug this one and plug it into the other side, you get a reversed reading. So you can go all the way from 0 to... 10, as long as they don't touch. They, yeah, yeah, they can't touch. So that's how a potentiometer works. It basically reads the ohm value, or the resistance, in the between the wiper and these pins. So what we can do is we can create a voltage divider. It's going to be a pretty similar circus, <laughs> pretty similar circuit to this one we just made, but uh, it's going to include the positive, the negative, and a pin. So now that we know this potentiometer is actually just an overpowered resistor, let's uh, connect it to an Arduino. So we're using these jumper wires to extend the length. They don't have any superpowers, kind of lame. One of the pins, one of the sides, is going to ground. The middle pin is going to go to the first analog pin. It's actually called AO. Um, and then the last pin, uh, this pin, will actually go to 5 volts. Now just plug the wires in, making sure that the signal pin is in the middle. I'm going to tape this off right now to avoid anything falling out during the video, because trust me, that happens all the time. <laughs> like three hours of footage, gone. So we have this potentiometer, the three wires are hooked up, and if we need to, we can switch them over here. All right, so plug the Arduino in and open MobiFlight. So if we open MobiFlight to a new configuration, we can click this MobiFlight Modules button right here. Let's add a device. Let's add a analog input. This is an analog input because it has um, everything done analogly. Um, there's a little wiper that physically moves the position of a variable resistor instead of like clicking one position to the left. So we're going to select the AO pin. This is the first analog pin on our Arduino right here. And we can adjust this sensitivity now or later. I think the default value of like 5 works pretty well. well let's give it a name. Usually I give it a name like Henry, but today I'm feeling like 
this is confusing enough. We won't do anything. We just want to con um, control the throttle. So that's that's it. We're going to just stop it there. So we're going to control a throttle. We might even uh, branch out. We'll make a second one and just move it over to control something else. Later, we'll con um, control the pitch. So we can have this throttle and pitch. Say, it, just because I want to show you, it can work for like throttles and stuff. And it can also work as a yoke. So I just used pins AO for the throttle and the next available pin for the pitch. And we'll just switch it over manually. I don't want to connect two potentiometers today. Update the module using the little button. Upload finished and press OK. If my Moby flight looks newer than yours, uh, it's because I'm using the beta. If my Moby flight looks older than yours, it's because you're actually a time traveler and you're watching this video in the future. All right, so you're gonna go over to this inputs tab once you flash the Arduino, activate it. We love when it's activated. And uh, let's make a new potentiometer named Bottle. Actually, what's a good like Thomas the Throttle? I use Thomas a lot, it's kind of fun. Thomas the tank engine, Thomas the throttle, all sorts of good stuff. But uh, we don't need a precondition, don't need a config reference. It's not going to reference anything. The sky is falling, the sky is falling. Uh, let's go to input. Module, first Arduino. This is the Arduino I have connected. I give it a fun name because I love to name everything. And we have a device. The first pin we connected to was the throttle on pin 1, pin AO. Action type. So we could have um, we could have all sorts of things here. What we want is Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 custom input. So this is going to let us code. I know, code. You know, uh, the code. Code is scary, but Moby Flight doesn't have to be. Jamie from the Moby Flight development team made this super awesome tool on the HubHop. So HubHop is something the Moby Flight is making where all the presets for Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 are. Super cool. And there's also a tool page. So what do we want? Just go through it and figure it out. <laughs> so we have a select preset where you can either do it for an Arduino or a joystick because Moby Flight now supports like custom joystick mapping. So you can connect it to an Arduino because it's connected to an Arduino. Select a preset. What do we want? Throttle. Let's do that. So this throttle is basically this little um, greater than or less than greater than x is greater than that, which means it's less than. So you have this little greater than sign, a k, and the throttle set. Throttle underscore set. You can always change this if you need another event. You could go back to the hub hop and find any potentiometer. Um, events under the preset lists. So you have input, input potentiometer, and output. So uh, let's say I want to search for flaps, like I just did. You can have this control right here, flaps set to this potentiometer value. And then you just copy the little K that's right here. K flaps set, paste it in here instead. So that is what this is doing. This Arduino is right here, is making it from an a minimum of zero to a maximum of 1023. So right here, it's kind of cool. It's like multiplying it by this specific number right here to get the values into a value of zero to 1023. This is super confusing if you don't use this generator, at least first. So it's really, it's really a fantastic thing uh, that Jamie put this in. This is like, this is awesome. So we can't put this custom code in yet because we don't know what the maximum input and output range is. Well, how do we know what the minimum and the maximum points are? If we remember with the icrometer, why did I call it that? The multimeter, uh, the value went from 0.00, .00 to 9.75, which is not 0.0, .0 .0 to 10.0. So got to do a little bit of calibration. If we go over to extras, settings, you can see logging mode. Enable this and set this to debug. Also, if you have offline mode enabled like me, make sure offline mode is off so it can talk to a simulator. 
that, that'd be ideal. Click OK. And you have this logging window right here. Out of the gate, we know our sensitivity is pretty OK, or it's not too sensitive, because nothing is moving until we make it move. So now it's telling me all of these changes up from 13 all the way up to 1023. So it looks like um, this potentiometer is doing super good because it its minimum value I'm seeing is 13. Maximum value I'm seeing is 1022, 1023, um, which is actually really good. So this is a super good, it's a pretty good calibrated potentiometer. The maximum value and that's when it's turned all the way right. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop. When it's turned all the way right, then the value is, as we saw it, value is like 1022, 1021, 20, 1023. We're going to set it to 1023. Um, just a little, like, one thing is a thousandth of the thing so it's like a third of a degree wheel it shouldn't matter too much and then when it's in the minimum value all the way over down down all the way to zero it gives a value of 13 as the minimum so now we can actually just copy this code go over to edit on our new line select our first Arduino select our throttle this is everything that we want to happen and we're going to actually use a custom input. This only works for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, um, but this is the best way I could find to use it. This basically spits out the code we need to paste into here. It's a super awesome tool, really cool um, that we get to use this. And I'll click OK. And now it's connected to an analog thing. I really should have had Microsoft Flight Sim loading up while I was filming, because now it's going to be like, 20 minutes. See you soon. So this was actually a pretty simple configuration. Let's click the activate button. Uh, sim status is a go. Cha-ching. Everything is good there. And let's press run. So right now, uh, it's not sensing anything. Let's go ready to fly. And we're just going to do a little run up um, in the 172. You're all going to cringe because I don't actually know how to fly. All right, so this throttle lever is all the way at zero. Then we twist it, and it's not working. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so I did an evil thing. I explained it wrong. So I did figure out something embarrassing. Uh, I actually mis like interpreted what this um, minimum and maximum input range means so this minimum and I can't believe I didn't think of this before this minimum event input range is what the throttle event goes from so the throttle event goes from 0 to 16383 which is kind of a pretty common one I think that's like 12 bits or something so that's a pretty high resolution um, and we're basically putting this high resolution into our lower resolution potentiometer so that's how it knows how to funnel into it that's why our um, throttle was only moving a little bit is because i thought this was your calibration uh when you do your calibration right here 13 and the maximum was 10 22. so now let's copy this code and even press the little button and paste it in when it doesn't look awful let's see if it works click run and I always think it's some like tragic misfire of a piston in my computer, but it's always like the cable unplugging here, <laughs> but, or like something stupid like that. All right, so if your mode flight Arduino unplugs, plug it in and restart mode flight. And now let's get to, to business. Let's see if we let's see if it works. Let's click run and see how it goes. So here we have it. We have our throttle knob working with mobile flight so we can you could put this on like a rack and pinion and make your own throttle which is super cool so now this responds to the input over here if you want it to move easier I think five is a pretty good sensitivity but if you want it to be super sensitive 
Um, it might bog down your performance a little bit, but you can put it at like high sensitivity whenever this moves one thousandth of its um, travel, then it'll like register basically. Upload finished, and you can see you can see this has a little bit of jitter. It's switching between ninety seven and ninety six. We really don't care about that, like, I guess, precise of a value. So basically, find a value that doesn't jitter, especially if you're making, like, a yoke or something. You want just a little tiny bit of dead zone, maybe, um, just so it doesn't jitter, like it did here with 12, 11, 12, 11, 10, and 11, 12. Yeah, just me, like, shaking the table and stuff makes jitter. And, like, tapping this. You want it to, like, register whenever you do this. Also, the higher the sensitivity, um, the more crazy it can get. One, I feel like it's a little overkill just because there's so much jitter, especially if your system isn't registering it properly. I feel like you can get pretty precise with this. All right, so this is great. We know how to run a throttle. Let's, uh, let's just see how we can run our pitch. So we cleared it out. Let's use the same tool generator. Select Arduino. Select your elevator for pitch. Select the minimum output range. Let's go to pin A1. Switch over there. Let's test it in debugging mode. The minimum for this is 13 to 1022. <laughs> wow, crazy. Uh, so we'll go 13 to 10.22. You can also, I believe, switch these 10.22 instead of switching your wiring. Let's let's check that fact. Check that. So the elevator, it auto filled these input events. It actually goes from negative 16.383 to positive 16.383. So that's its elevator range. It basically has twice the resolution. So we can copy this. Copy that, or just copy to clipboard, which is pretty cool. Um, we're going to duplicate this row. Everything is the same except for its I don't know how to spell platypus. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> um, precondition, config reference, input. So this is the same Arduino, first Arduino, but a different device. It's going to be a pitch device. We're going to use the same custom input but this time paste our different custom input, if that makes sense. Basically, make your screen look like this. You'll be good. Um, now go to OK and stop it and run it. Disable this one so it doesn't interfere. I don't think it does, but just be safe. Uh, that's good practice. And now if we use this, it's pushing forward, pulling back. So this is our pitch axis. So you can control a yoke with MobiFlight, which is pretty cool. Um, I'll have to use this maybe in my um, actual sim because this is pretty cool. I think it's the same, uh, I think, uh, resolution as the Ar Arduino Leonardo. If you're going to do like permanent flight controls for your billion dollar home cockpit setup, I'd probably use like a Leo Bodnar card. I I think those are higher resolution. I think they're like 12-bit instead of 8-bit, um, which is four more bits, whatever that means. So if you're a flight sim snob, you might consider that. But this, honestly, is super cool. I honestly could, could use this in my yoke. I think this is a great solution. So this only works, unfortunately, with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Other simulators, right now, at least in MobiFlight, don't have the custom input. Thing. And if they did, it, I believe it would be a different um, way of doing it. So this is actually how you can connect a potentiometer to an Arduino with MobiFlight so that you can get your flaps or throttle working, which is super cool. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much to Jamie for making the generator. That is insanely helpful. Thank you to David, Similar, and the newest patron, Chris. All the Patreons help so much developing this content, and I hope this video was helpful.